Let's go to Taylor in Chicago, Illinois. Taylor, how can we help? Hey, guys. I feel so privileged to talk to you both. Oh, well, we are the one that are privileged. So what's going on? So about a year and a half ago, my husband um, was let go. Um, it Basically, in a nutshell, he really struggled to communicate um, boundaries at work. And it wasn't like they were asking him to work more than 40 hours, but the kind of work that they were putting on his plate was so high and tense that when he did ask for more help, um, it was refused. And they told him to do a time study, and it was, it was kind of a mess. Um, and I should preface that by saying he's, like, crazy gifted and efficient. And so they even they told him he was going to get a raise, and then they never delivered, but they still added more on his plate without said raise. Um, and so it really started affecting our home life. Um you know, our marriage and our children and just so many things. And then when things got to a really bad breaking point, um, you know, it just, we just couldn't be in, in ministry anymore. So we're in a much better spot now. Praise God. I mean, like I said, he's been home for a year and a half. He, thank God, he has a YouTube channel that does really well. Um, but we're really committed to getting out of this le- little debt that we have left. Um, so he got a warehouse job on the weekends, but the end goal was to maybe get back in ministry, but we're so terrified, so terrified because he's terrified and I'm terrified because what if it happens again? Like, what if we fail to set those boundaries or he fails to set those boundaries? And he's a yes guy. Like, you know, if, if you want him to jump, he'll say how high, where, how long. And he's just, he's an amazing worker and he's what? an amazing purpose person yeah but it ends up going into other parts of our family and life and it's just yeah it's I, hard <laughs> yeah um john is going to jump in here it can really help uh but i'm curious what position was he in and, and, and was it a parachurch so ministry was, a was it a church it was a church he was a pastor staff pastor um a worship pastor and he i mean like i said they gave well they promised to raise and and then after finally asking three times, hey, where's the raise, where's the raise, we finally gave it, but it wasn't nearly what it was promised. Yeah, okay, so um, I, I want John to speak to the boundaries issue, but I want to make a statement that I hope you take back to your husband. Um, maybe, he, maybe he can watch this on YouTube because we're talking about him. Yeah, um, yeah. He's tall, but like I said, he's working pretty much 80 hours a week now. <laughs> yeah, well, so here's the deal. The fear that every church leadership structure is going to be like it was is just nonsense it's just nonsense he knows what an unhealthy leadership structure looks like he can identify it he can taste it smell it point it out a mile away and he needs to be armed with that confidence that that's not always going to be the case but he's a part of the equation too that's where i hand the baton to my much more capable colleague (laughs) on his boundary issues well you know i mean i could guess what it is but not talking to him but uh, he he can't assume so that fear is misguided. Right. That needs to be just blown up. But his yeah, boundary so, issue is part of the problem. So here's Taylor. Here's a big part. The fear is the fear is real. It's real. Yes. And, and so what's happened is you guys got fried, right? And yeah. now both your hearts and your brains are scanning every possible environment that looks similar to say, "Hey, we know this story and it hurt us, so I'm gonna keep us out of that." Right. Um, and to Ken's point, that's that's not a fair representation. On the other side, if, as you say, he can't say no, he won't do boundaries, he will say yes to everything, I'm going to tell you, don't go into ministry. Because yeah. he's going to make relationships with people who love him, and then they're going to be hurt when that thing goes south. And if he can't say no, if he can't establish a, what is my work, daily job, what is my salary, what are the raise structures, what is my responsibilities when I'm off, if he can't do that, then he doesn't have the other side of the skill set of taking care of people, which is taking care of yourself, right? Right, which I should say that he has come, I I, I was listening, you know, I, we listen to you guys every day, our kids pretty much ask us when we're going to be on the Dave Ramsey show, <laughs> doing our debt free scream, um, but he's come so so far sure it's not like we're roommates anymore it's it used to be like that i used to tell him two years ago i just feel like we're just 
living together and just kind of going in circles. Um, so he's, I mean, when I tell you that he's put in the work, I, we read the proximity principle awesome. <laughs> this past month. We, I mean, we're going through books and we're, he's, and I want to be his cheerleader. And so he's, He's working on setting those boundaries, if that makes sense. But Absolutely. It's still like it's so, still a struggle. It's still, here's a here's I a great way you can, can see it in the smallest places. Here's a great way you can do it. When there are boundaries to be set in your home, and I'm talking about little stuff, like somebody knocks on the door, and normally you would go answer it and say, um, "No, thank you, we're not interested." He gets to go do that. And when he comes back, I want him to verbalize to you, to be vulnerable and say, "That made me uncomfortable." not listening to the whole pitch and go ahead and buying the magazines even though I didn't want them. If his mom or your mom or somebody's family or somebody's friends invite y'all out and y'all don't want to go, he is the guy that's not going to text. He's going to call him and say, hey, thanks for the invite. We're not going to be able to make it this time. No excuses. No, but next time, it, just say, um, we're not going to be able to make it this time, but we look forward to catching up next time and then hang up. And then I want him to turn and look at you and verbalize, what am I feeling here? And all we're trying to do is two things. Number one, he's got to practice boundaries. And if he waits till the game to take a shot, then he's going to miss the shot, right? So he's going to practice. You're going to help him practice. And two, I want him to verbalize these feelings that he feels, that insecurity, that nervousness, his heart starts racing. They're not going to kill him. In fact, they're normal, right? And so you're going to practice and practice and practice. And then, yeah, when he goes in to apply for a job at his next church, He's going to know, hey, I got burned on this stuff last time. I learned a great lesson. Now I know the questions to ask. And if the community's not right, the community's not right. Yeah. But practice boundaries, just like you would any other skill, yeah. right? Yeah, I just want to reiterate what John said that I agree. I think he does need to get help and even counseling. That's great counseling right there. But I want him to get to the bottom of why he feels he's got to say yes. Because if he feels called, he's got to do it. Yeah. But John's right. Don't get back into ministry until he's healthy. And you can do it right. Uh, that's good. But thank you for the call. You guys are amazing. Awesome You're killing couple, it, by the way. Good. He's a I'm great guy, out man. Of debt. I love it. He's busting it right oh, now. Oh, what a stud. And remind him that you appreciate how hard he's working. That might be a little fun thing you need to hear as well.